Hey, good day, good afternoon, good morning. Uh, what, what else is there, Melissa? There's... Uh, good evening. Good evening. That's right. I knew I was forgetting one. Uh, welcome to today's LinkedIn live stream. Uh, I'm Rick Vanover from Veeam. And I'm Melissa Palmer. And this is our this is a great combo here today. Melissa and I have a good jam, if that is such a word, uh, when it comes to these live streams. And we've got a really compelling topic for you. So uh, first of all, before we get started, let us know where you're from. Go in the chat. You can drop uh, your location and we're going to illuminate the map. But aside from illuminating the map, we can also interact with you. So you can drop in a question. We've got Christian and our social media team tuned in. So if you want to get those uh, going, we could. So uh, Melissa, what's the topic today? Something that's really interesting, and you might not be associating with Veeam when you think of us and what we do, but we're going to talk about Veeam agents. Oh, indeed. Mm, the, agents. Yes, yes. the agents. So the agents are a, a great set of products. And Honestly, a lot of people kind of took the information at Veeam on 2014 that we're going to go down that route. We didn't call it an agent at the time, but it's really grown up and we're going to go through that here today. So uh, let's jump into it. Um, I've got, well, believe it or not, we even have content prepared. Isn't that something? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> it is live. So let's start just on definition. Uh, you know, when I say, what is an agent? A lot of people know Veeam from the virtualization space or maybe even the Office 365 space or the backup in the cloud space. But an agent, that's a very important part of a backup plan, you know? So what are some characteristics that, you know, in your experience with using the Veeam agents, Melissa, that you could share? I'm glad you said Veeam agents and not just agents in general, right? Because as a VMware person, sometimes you hear agent agent and you start to cringe a little bit. Um, definitely not the case with Veeam agents. I did a really cool demo uh, for the vXpert group earlier this year where I just kind of had uh, the Veeam agent for Linux installed on this stupid like machine I have under my desk and I restored it pretty much instantly to VMware vSphere, right? So the fact of the matter is we do have physical assets in our environment still. Like I would love everything to be 100% VMware, and that's just not the case, right? So I think it was, this was well before my Veeam time, but Veeam customers saying, I love Veeam for my VMs, but I have all this other stuff I have to deal with too. And how am I going to back that up, right? If I could use the same interface, the same great products and features, wouldn't that be nice? Oh, it would. And, you know, it's available across the spectrum as early as Windows 7 SP1, all the way up to the latest Windows 10 on the desktop side. And a lot of people don't really correlate that, you know, this computer I'm talking to you on is backed up with Veeam and I'm sure many others uh, that, you know, actually it's kind of funny. I think there's like eight or 10 at my house that are backed up with Veeam. Uh, and the other thing to note, especially uh, fresh off of Microsoft Ignite is that uh, Veeam, I'd like to say rocks support for the LTSC and SAC. So the long-term servicing channel, semi-annual channel, those are those crazy numbers like 2004 for Windows. We really take the platform support in general including LTSC and, and SAC, really seriously. So uh, it's 2019, but you also see platform support outside of agents, a priority like vSphere 7 and, and, and such. So this has really been important for us. And there's, uh, there's something new coming, uh, a new agent. Which one is that? I am so excited because just a couple of weeks ago, I dropped a mug of coffee across the laptop of my, the uh, keyboard of my MacBook. Luckily, I survived it, but if I hadn't, I would have been in a lot of trouble. Uh, so Veeam Agent for Mac OS is coming as well to kind of protect a lot of those assets that people are working with. Indeed. So there's Unix platform, so server, desktop, really everything in between. And a couple characteristics, right? This is an in-operating system installation. So, it I mean, think about what an agent is. A Veeam agent would have to be installed upon that OS. And it'll give you multiple restore options, but also it gives you a lot of different recovery. And we're, we're going to talk about that at the end. But I think there's a little bit of a perception. Aren't agents bad? Uh, you know, you kind of caught me early on with that. Melissa. Yeah, I did. Um, for example, when I was still a VMware administrator, we had uh, two production data centers for the whole world, right? So someone's production was someone else's backup window. And this was way back in the day, right? So there was actually an agent installed in each and every VM, which meant meant when backups ran, production was crushed in a different area of the world. So uh, that's what a lot of people kind of have that gut reaction of, oh, no, don't tell me an agent, because it was a problem with virtual machines. And that's one of the reasons Veeam exists, right? 
Yeah, indeed. And we actually even internally had to kind of reprogram ourselves because we had, you know, built around agentless is the way to go. Uh, and, and to be fair, if you have agentless options, it's always the better way to go exactly. on scale, exactly. performance, manageability. But there are scenarios where you have to go another direction. And that also leads us to some out of the box use cases. And I just got word that uh, we've got a great crowd tuned in. So drop on the chat where you're from and we're going to illuminate a cool map here in a bit. And if you also have questions, Christian will help aggregate those questions in for us. So what are some of the other use cases, you know, Can aside I add from my favorite user? use case that I don't actually see on this? Uh oh, we didn't Did put I it on the slide before. And I don't think we forgot. It. I don't think we talked about it. When we were prepping. P to V's, right? So people are still P to V'ing stuff. And if you've ever done a P to V, it's an absolute special process. With Veeam, you can install an agent, back up, and then just restore to VMware vSphere, and you've basically P to V to server, right? So yeah. that's kind of a, I guess, outside of the box case, the P to V easy button I like to talk about. I'll, I'll, I'll up you a little bit here. Up it's me. more of a migration because migration. you could also take that to the cloud. And we're going to talk that's about true that. Too. That's you true. know, it's a migration use case. And so to VMware, to Azure to AWS. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's the agent kind of outbound, but the other products can actually even go the other direction too. So you got some really interesting options today, but you know, there's also a good use case. If you're using something that's not VMware, not Hyper-V or not AHV, should you choose to do that, you can use the agent on those platforms. Yeah, and if you wrote a hypervisor and you're running your data center on that, use an agent to back up those Wrote VMs. a hypervisor. <laughs> wrote a hyper. Wow. Why not? Or, or just turned it on on Linux, you know, so KVM comes to mind. Uh, that's the, the big one or Zen. And then also alternative clouds, right? right. That's a big one. You know, The cloud Gmail you built cloud. under your desk. I don't know what's wrong with me in the under the desk situation. <laughs> I'm... I'd like to see your desk. It's, it sounds pretty it's really big. big. So Tencent cloud, Google cloud, <laughs> Ali cloud, that would be a use case as well. But then that's where it kind of starts to be the out of the box areas. In fact, I'll give you some random information. When we had the first beta for the Veeam endpoint backup, which was the predecessor to Veeam Agent for Windows, most of the downloads were in Azure. We thought that was very mm -hmm. interesting because we could tell mm -hmm. by the traffic. But then you get into specific VM configuration. So things like um, physical mode RDM, mm -hmm. right? Is it that's kind of like a bad idea nowadays to keep doing that, but people do. People do. And that's a use case for the agent as well. Um, another one that comes up is if anyone's provisioned an iSCSI LUN directly to the iSCSI initiator inside of a guest OS, that's a use case for oh, a specific one. VM. Yeah, kind of, you know, some of those weird ones happen. Clusters, that's a good example of a place to use the agent, even if it's a virtual machine. And, ooh, this one, fragile. We had we had to really think about the word, fragile infrastructure. Um you know, the IOPS don't lie, I like to say, right? Uh, and what I mean by that is, you know, sometimes the infrastructure driven backups can tip it over. I mean, you have a great storage background, Melissa. I'm sure you've seen some things. Oh, I've seen things. <laughs> <laughs> but like, there's a certain like, limit well once you start moving too many iops you start having some uh, yeah fragile problems. is a really good use case because it could be fragile for any number of reasons it could just be this really old critical application that you have to keep running you know it has to run it's business critical sure you're working on migrating it but it's going to take a while they're around right yeah and you know the other side of it is it's not just a server use case these agents no, right so no. the very possible uh, very many possibilities here. And so, oh, we got our first cut at the map. Wow. wow thank there's you a ton all. of people watching oh, today. Wow. Well, we've got visitors from the UK, NYC, Washington, DC, Brazil, Obrigado, Egypt, Turkey, France, uh, California, West Coast represent, Romania, Bulgaria, South Africa, Saudi Arabia, Morocco, Portugal, Senegal, Sweden, Boston, India, Toronto. Hey, hey uh, Toronto, you guys will be appreciate this. Uh, I had Tim's for breakfast. Tim <laughs> uh, India, Toronto, Canada. Oh, that Toronto. New Jersey, Netherlands, Guyana. Oh, that might be a first. Dubai. Well, that might be a fun. Yeah, and Alberta. Hey, Canada represented. Hey, thank you all for sharing that. And uh, wow, it's great. Great, great representation. And if we missed you, make sure to add your location in the comments. Yeah, I love the auto map. But uh, the agents, you know, we have all these great use cases. And the most important part, is there's a free edition of the agents. That's actually what I run on this system here. And every day I eject 
the USB drive so it's offline, protected against ransomware. And chances are the free edition will be a really good addition, addition. The free edition is a good addition to your backup strategy. So, but the other side of it is servers yeah. and endpoints yeah. did not always yeah. what they yeah. seem yeah. and you don't mm -hmm. want to play this game. So what's the difference, Melissa, in your mind between a server and an endpoint? Well, you would think an endpoint is like, you know, maybe a laptop or a device that someone's using and maybe car carrying around with them. They might lose it. They might drop, et cetera. Or maybe it just sits at the workstation. Um, but people do crazy things on their endpoints, right? And it might not become an issue of lost data until it happens, right? So yeah. I'm working on all these reports, but I'm not actually saving them to my home drive or my file share, but they're super important, right? So there's a lot of use cases where we said it right here, servers and endpoints might not be what they seem. Hey, it's just someone's laptop. Well, it could be a lot more than just someone's laptop, depending on what data is on it. Right, or if they've installed applications, take SQL Server Express, for example. I'm not, wait, am I supposed to have Veeam backup and replication installed on my laptop? No, I'm just kidding. Well, that would be an example of something that would put <laughs> SQL Express on there, right? Because exactly. if you or your user base have installed an application that might have its own little small database, mm -hmm. it kind of is production and doing things more than just a person's endpoint. And I think that's really important. We actually made a very conscious decision with the agent, especially for Windows technology, where you could have a server edition used on a workstation OS for that very reason, if you have SQL uh, installed on Windows 10, for example. So you always want to, first of all, have a backup. So I actually have had a, a great number of conversations, especially nowadays, with people about backing up the endpoints because of the massive work from home change. But the thought is, you know, don't take that chance. Don't play that game. So go ahead and download the trial of Meme Backup and Replication. It includes the agents. And you can do that with the QR code here, as well as the short URL text there. But the reality is, is that I'd like to say big data can live in small places. And uh, that, you know, is kind of a cheeky comment. But the reality is, think about what's going on nowadays, the data capture, is on untrusted networks. So hopefully with the devices that IT have been implementing and provisioning for organizations. But when we talk about that data, I think it's really important to have some level of protection at the edge, at the end point. And uh, I've had to do restores uh, at home, for example, uh, with the Veeam agent for Windows uh, twice, actually. And once was actually a very significant piece of my personal data. And then the other was a, a favor assist to my daughter in regards to her schooling, which I guess is important as well. But, uh, you know, the data is going to be wherever people are creating it. And, uh, you know, Melissa, you work from home. I mean, chances are you're creating data there, too. Lots of data. And uh, I actually had an instance. Remember, Rick, do you remember all our conversations about should I get a service or not? Should I get a service or not? Right. Mm -hmm. Eventually I got one. It died within the first couple weeks of me having it. Went to the Microsoft store. They handed me a new one with a caveat. Well, here's your new surface. We can't recover anything from your old one. Good luck. Ouch. Right? Actually, well, that's the perffect trifecta. I now have confirmation that every technology device you've ever touched has had at least one breakage. Mm, okay. Um, <laughs> you're not denying it. I'm not denying it. I, I have a, you know, okay, anyway. Um, but the fact is I being the backup professional that I am, right? I had everything backed up, so I didn't really care. I was like, yeah, sure, take it. I don't need it. I have everything backed up someplace or I'm saving in the cloud. I'm good to go. But kind of a lot of the average users out there might not be doing this kind of stuff. And it, it's really easy to get bit. Like I've seen people lose all their data for whatever reason. And hey, Data fair, makes the world go around, right? It does. And just as you've destroyed devices, I'm horrible in the lab. In fact, well, I'm not allowed to touch I think, vCenter. I think you destroyed my desktop within a month of me starting here. Yep, I broke out. your desktop. Yeah, yeah, you I, broke my desktop. Don't even ask what happened to vCenter 02 in the lab, okay? <laughs> Let's just say we have some <laughs> yeah. new rules. And I've been relegated to the Hyper-V cluster. I'm not, I'm not lying. We don't even let him in the vSphere cluster anymore, folks. Nope. Nope. So then the question is, why would you want to do an image-based backup. And I like the very last bit. It's complete encapsulation. And that is so important from a, you know, those other use cases you spoke of, Melissa, about portability to other platforms. If you pick it all up, you can put it all down. Move it anywhere, anywhere you want. We don't care. We'll put it anywhere for you. 
yeah, the other kind of angle here is that bare metal restore is actually that's a lot of what a lot of people think of when they think of physical backup, whether it's server or endpoint devices. And you know, yeah, Veeam's done that. I can actually share with you. I I use that with again my daughter's laptop. I actually she she started doing a lot more online schooling earlier this year, obviously, as a lot of other students have around the world. I took a backup of her laptop with a hard drive. And I restored it to the same thing with a SSD, right? That's a migration oh, that's use case. Fancy. That's yeah. Fancy. So it's like this was all done with the free edition. So the bare metal recovery, Windows and Linux, unique portability options. So, and I, I mean, simple and fast. I, I think I should have put the word easy to use on there. Very easy to use. Yeah. Veeam is too hard to use, said who? No one. Ever. Exactly. Ever. So, uh, yeah, so check out a trial if you want. Just go to VBR trial uh, or there's QR code here below. But now we're going to jump into a little bit of a demo. So before I go into the demo, I want to let everyone know there's an event coming up. In fact, everyone at Veeam is working really hard on that. Uh, it's called Veeam Live. And we actually have a very special session just on the agents. We've got Andrew and Dimitri on our team going to rock an agents session for agent for Linux and Agent for Windows. Dimitri has a specialization in the Linux one and uh, Andrew on the Windows one. And, you know, there's going to be, let's see, uh, I'm doing a session on ransomware and I'm going to, this is going to be tough, but I'm only going to talk for one minute on the session mm, on ransomware. Yeah, okay. okay. You want to take a bet? Yeah, I'll take a bet. The other 29 minutes are going to be- I'm going to time you. Okay. I'm going to time you. You know, I'm genetically programmed to not go late <laughs> on content. But the other 29 minutes are going to be uh, two users who have beat ransomware with Veeam. That's why I'm going to shut my mouth. So you want to check that out. I've also got a session with the Veeam Explorers, and I'm drawing a blank. What's your session, Melissa? Uh, Chris and I are doing a session on Veeam 1, and basically we're going to show everybody why everybody should be using Veeam 1 in the environment. Spoiler alert, Veeam Intelligent Diagnostics totally takes care of your Veeam environment for you. So that's going to be a heavy demo session as well. We're going to show off lots awesome. of cool stuff. One day event, 20th of October, you can sign up. It's free. We'll bring it to you. So check that out. So let's jump in and take a look at the agent for Linux. So this is one of the newer agents, right? The Windows one started first. Uh, I rock Ubuntu in the lab and let's go ahead and log in. Now there's a very long list. We had it up earlier and all the different like supported distros. It's pretty straightforward. But the thought here is let's not do Teams. Let's close that. But the thought is if I want to run the Veeam agent, for Linux, I need the terminal. So let's go into terminal. Sorry about my screen video is a little cheeky here. There it is. So let's run sudo, right? Because in Ubuntu, that's how I'm going to be in as administrator. And then here is the Veeam agent for Linux console. And if you've ever used Veeam backup and replication, this looks and feels really, really similar. So the processing engine is very similar. The target is the same. It goes to a VBK file, but let's go ahead and configure the job. So just hitting C for configure, give it a name, give it a location. Where am I going to put it? I'm going to put the entire virtual machine, which is important. I want a complete encapsulation and I can put it in a number of different places. So I'm going to put it in the Veeam repository. I could also put it on like a shared folder or even just an individual volume or even to a service provider, which is kind of interesting. So I can immediately get this data off site, drop in the credentials to the Veeam backup and replication server, and then I'm ready to go. Pretty straightforward to the repository, seven restore points. And one of the last options is the schedule. And that schedule, I'm going to then say, sorry about the screen. Yes, the screen video resolution is not my friend here today. So sorry about that. But the, the final part of that was just setting that time. So whoopsie daisy to that screen resolution. I have it going on a separate system. Trust me, these are live. Apologize for that, friends. Uh, we got a question from Mahmood. He says, I have a question about Active Directory backup and restore to virtual. Ba -bum -bum. Andrew and... Uh, Sandra Burkauer, one of the vanguards, just did some really good content around that. So, uh, Mahmoud, I'll give you one kind of really simple way to kind of go about that. First of all, go check out the recent webinar from Sander and Andrew. Secondly, stop Active Directory services. Really, I think from 2008 R2, they become man they became manageable. 
stop AD services, do a vMagent for backup, a vMagent for Windows backup, immediately do a restore, then they should be able to do that. Now, Microsoft says never, ever, 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 ever do a P2V of a domain controller, but, you know, test it, test it in a virtual lab, make sure everything else is offline, take the, uh, I would actually stop the domain services, do a vMagent for backup Windows, Beam agent for Windows backup to a USB drive with that domain controller completely off the network. So no update sequence numbers are going to change in any way. Then restore it. And then that's basically an offline migration. I used to do that back in the P2V days. So we're going to go over to Windows and another question from Lionel. Is there a plugin for vSphere 7? There's actually been a vSphere web client for a long time as part of Veeam 1 and uh, Enterprise Manager. So you can have some basic command and control functions for like starting, stopping jobs, et cetera. And you can also use the um, vSphere role-based access in a couple different ways. So just kind of port That's over true. all your vSphere. Uh, RBAC have you set it up. You can use vSphere tags, which is probably my favorite. So it's not that much of an uplift to actually give people access to that self-service portal for vSphere. Yeah. Uh, Mahmoud, Mahmoud asked another question, uh, physical to virtual. Yes, you can actually take, like this computer I'm talking to you on now, I can instantly recover it as a VMware VM or to the cloud. So that's great. So um, one thing I want to highlight about the Windows agent, there is a technology, this server CBT driver. Um, it's probably the most underestimated technology with the Windows agent. So Veeam grew up in the VMware and Hyper-V space, right? We had a situation where we love change block tracking. Well, we don't have that in physical world. Well, we do now. We made it for Windows Server OSs, and then there's also the Veeam Snap module, kernel module for Linux, right? So we kind of have that. I wrote a paper on it, and it actually outperformed Hypervisor RCT, Resilient Change Tracking. Mm -hmm awesomeness let's hope this screen share is sorted out in a little bit yeah better. we'll try again so let's uh, try this one let's talk a little bit about windows agent and first and foremost uh we just want to see how easy it is to kind of group our physical assets right so we're going to create a protection group in this case we're doing sql servers and this is kind of our logical construct of how we're going to manage our agents really simple to do we can do it a bunch of different ways yeah, and I've got that bad video. <laughs> and we got with the video is not so great again. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, it'll automatically, we have it set to look for a uh, computer group. So it'll rescan daily for us and add those agents as they're found as computers are new added, new computer accounts, and just kind of add them to that protection group. Yeah, I apologize for that. That is my fault, friends. I uh, I did not want that to happen that way. So um, the main thing about I'll just zoom into something. See, I did I did a I did a little cheat. You I'll cheated because you didn't think I did cheat. Forward. I did a video, <laughs> and I will never do a video again. But we'll we'll watch it this way. I think this will actually work a little bit better. But this is where you can see that behaving a little bit. But basically, these SQL Server systems. I want to zoom into my favorite part. Right. Does it have anything to do with the thing you highlighted before we started talking? It it may have, and I lost it. There it is. The protection group. Let's let's talk about this real quick. And I apologize for the video for the live. This is live, by the way. Um, so yeah, what are these three options right here, which I think are really, really, really important? Oh, they're my favorite. So uh, you can just have Veeam automatically install your backup agent for you. So we were talking about oh, you actually have to go, you know, make sure the agent's installed. Veeam will actually do all that for you and it'll take care of the updates too. And take it a step further, it will install that change block tracking driver that Rick highlighted on your physical box for you. So one of the things that has happened over the evolution of the Veeam agents is that the manageability of it has increased, right? You're mat you can manage everything centrally from Veeam backup and replication for your physical assets as well. So you can kind of stay in that thing, single pane of glass and use the tools that you're used to. Uh, when it comes time to you know, create a backup job, you're gonna do it almost exactly the same way you would for a virtual server. The wizard uh, looks, feels, and smells exactly the same way. You just have a couple more options because there are more options with some of the physical stuff because you can kind of get really granular and say, um, you know, what kind of job is it? Uh, are we managed by the backup server, which is a really great way to deploy it? Or, you know, maybe you don't wanna use that centralized management piece and you wanna manage, manage it individually, you could do that as well. Yeah, the one thing I'll also highlight is that if you're managing or doing a backup of a cluster, that does require to be managed by the server because there's 
if this right. is a word, internode coordination. Ooh, that's fancy. required. Uh, it's not in the user guide. I just made that up. And then the other thing I'll highlight, and this is where, you know, again, things are not what they seem necessarily, right? I'll just zoom in. I had to zoom in. I know I did. Right here. Yes, let's go right here to SQL Town. And SQL Town, you love SQL Town. I right? love SQL Town. I, I got to say, I migrated a SQL database last week and did it no problem for a shot. I was kind of shocked at myself. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we got the map coming up here in a second, but if you have a chance, let us know where you're from and let's, let's light it up. But yeah, the, the VM agent for windows really similar to what we've done for uh, backups of virtual machines. And I really apologize everyone for the uh, videos not displaying correctly, which means guess who's never doing videos again on a LinkedIn live stream. That would be this guy. Uh, we were we'll trying to make it live, it. live, Li live is live. And, we actually didn't even test it, believe it or not. But what's the best part about these agents, Melissa? There's there's one word that matters the most. Restoring from a backup? Well, why even do it? You know, and I think the restore is so so significant. Now the it's it's actually interesting because we have a lot of the same recovery types that we mm -hmm. do from a virtual machine that's agentless, but this is agent Ted, which is interesting. So you, of course, file level volume level but like well the, bare metal recovery right you're not going to have that for a vm that's true can't do that for a virtual machine Same can't. or dissimilar so yeah. that old piece of hardware maybe you have to keep physical for some weird licensing reason because you know sometimes that happens right you mm -hmm. can move it to a new physical server using the vm agent as well from the map we got really good check-ins northern ireland ohio hey oh oregon Switzerland and Indianapolis. I wonder if that's my sister. Anyway, <laughs> welcome everyone. Ohio might be my family if that's Amy Love. Hey, but anyways, uh, the recovery is where it's at. And I think the most important thing to realize about these recovery options within the Veeam agents is that you can really get yourself out of almost any scenario, uh, ransomware, loss of right. device, coffee on keyboard, mm -hmm. um, application issue windows updates gone wrong in fact oh, i remember yeah, the worst. yeah i remember a couple years ago someone went and i'm having trouble remembering but they run windows 8 1 and do you remember that time that windows 10 was free to upgrade for a little bit yeah yeah, yeah. they did that we had the veeam agent already supported windows 10 but the agent was backing up 8 1 and then it like took a look at things like, well, I need to do an active full backup. It threw a warning because there's so many things that had changed with the 8.1 to 10 upgrade, but the backup went completely seamlessly. Takeaway, if your upgrade didn't go seamlessly, you could have restored. So, you know, and whether it was Windows 10 and it'll be again with the next Windows and more. So Windows tablets, definitely check it out. Uh, application, point in time, all kinds of great recovery. So uh, which one of these, you know, are kind of your favorite? I think I know, uh, Melissa. Okay, which one I got to pick something wrong now so you don't have my favorite. It's probably instant v restore to vSphere VM or uh, bare metal recovery to a dissimilar device like that use case of I have the really old hard server. I'm going to put it on a newer server, but it's got to stay physical. Indeed. So, so many portability options the cloud, app, point in time with SQL, Oracle. Don't, don't take our word. Take your own word for it. You can go exactly. download a trial at uh, at the Veeam website. Just go to VBR trial, VWE.am. And, you know, this. hopefully you've enjoyed this uh, stream. Thank you all for the participation. I want to give a shout out next week, Monday, Sir Dave Russell and one of my favorites, Dan Thompson from 451 Group. Uh, he's one of the Vanguardian analysts. It's kind of a joke. But anyways, they're going to be doing their industry insight sessions. So on behalf of the Veeam Global Marketing Team, the Veeam Product Strategy Team, and Melissa, thank you all for attending the stream.